Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sonyavadi Paschajate Sitarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaivacha Patita nam pavane bio vaishna vibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare so very happy to have this opportunity to speak to all of you this evening. Krishna consciousness is a universal message. It's meant for people everywhere, all over the planet, not only this planet, even the all over the material and the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, everybody is a devotee. In the spiritual world, the people there, every day, they're only talking about Krishna and they're all serving Krishna. We're here in the material world, right? They're the two worlds, the material world and the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, everyone has a, a, a body which is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. But in the material world, in this world, we have bodies which are full of ignorance, which are miserable and which are suffering, right? We're all suffering just like just now we're suffering because of this uh, pandemic, this COVID-19 problem. We have a lot of restrictions, so many things we cannot do and so many things we have to do, right? We cannot run around the way we used to. And we, we have to wear a mask everywhere. And so, <laughs> for devotee, it's not a big problem because we're used to rules and regulations, right? Just like in yoga, yoga, the beginning of yoga are rules and regulations. If you practice astanga yoga, Right. Do we have any yoga teachers here today? Anybody a yoga teacher? No. Unusual. <laughs> we have many. Yes, it's Wee Wee. The yoga teacher, the Singapore Wee Wee. Wee Wee. Wee Wee. Wee Wee is a yoga teacher. Right, Wee Wee teaches yoga, right. Mm. So, Wee Wee knows that in Astanga Yoga begins with Yama and Niyama. Yama are the things you shouldn't do and Niyama are the things you have to do. And so we get this, everybody, you know, I was saying, you know, you have to do, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't go big groups of people and you can't run around, go out of this, you, you have to stay in the one place. Right, so in, in our Krishna consciousness, we also have that. We say you cannot take meat, fish and egg. We shouldn't take the, the dirty food, the animal food, the animal flesh or the fish, because first of all, it's not merciful. We want to keep the quality of mercy. We are very kind. Devotees, we have virtue. It's good to be. A, a, it's good to have virtue. Virtue means good qualities. Right? 
we should have good qualities. I was reading yesterday one book by a devotee. The devotee, he's my god brother. His name is Krishna Shetra Swami. So he wrote a book about cows, about protecting cows. And he was telling the story, he told the story about Maharaj Yudhisthira. Do you all know who is Maharaj Yudhisthira? Mary, do you know? Do you remember who is Maharaj Yudhisthira? Uh, yes, he's the uh, brother of Arjuna and the siblings. Yes, right. And he's, he's the number one. He's Lauda. <laughs> Right? Oh, yes. He's Lao Da. So he's the big brother. So he was going to heaven, you know, they had finished everything and they were re leaving the world. And the Mahabharata describes how Maharaj Yudhisthira is going into heaven. But he has this dog following him. There's this dog following him. It followed him all the way. So they got to the door of heaven and Indra is the king of heaven. So Indra said, we don't want this dog coming in here. This is heaven. We don't let dogs come in here. No dogs. Because you know dogs, you know, sometimes they're dirty, you know. And it's hard to keep them clean. But Maharaj Yudhisthira said, no, he said, this dog is follow is with me. If the dog cannot come in, I am not coming in. <laughs> Maharaj Yudhisthira was so, like that. He was so, so kind, you know, he was so concerned for even the dog. He said, if the dog cannot come in, then I'm not coming in either. And so Maharaj Yudhisthira actually, he... He, he refused to go in, but then it turned out that this dog was not an ordinary dog, but he was actually a heavenly being who had taken the form of a dog just to test the quality of Maharaj Yudhisthira, just to show what good qualities Maharaj Yudhisthira has. So this is the idea that when we become devotees, we change. That maybe before becoming a devotee, we were not very good. We had a lot of faults and a lot of bad habits. But after we become a devotee, gradually we change. So Maharaj Yudhisthira, he was tested like that. It was the arrangement to show his good qualities so that he could show the, the effect. So I, I think we all experience a bit like this, that when we become devotees, you know, gradually we also change. I know one devotee, we have the one devotee in China and uh, the husband and wife, they both became devotees. So the wife told me, she said, you know, she said, since my husband's become a devotee, he's changed. He said, before, he used to be very angry and, you know, it was so difficult to deal with him. He was always complaining and proud. And he said, but now he's become a devotee, he's become humble. He's become more, much more gentle and tolerant, you know, changed. The qualities change because we're in contact with Krishna. How does it happen? Because we're in touch with Krishna, because we're connecting to Krishna by chanting and by worshipping Krishna, by hearing about Krishna and by eating Krishna prasadam. So all of these things, they have an effect. Just like 
Prabhupada gives the example, if you have a metal bar and you put it in the fire, then the metal bar gradually it becomes hot like the fire. It takes on all the qualities of the fire, heat and light, and it can burn also. Although it's a metal rod, because it's in contact with the fire, it becomes like a fire. The same way, when we connect to Krishna by yoga, right? Yoga means to link. Yoga means Lienjaya, Zaiichi, Vamagan Krishna, Zaiichi. So we take on all the good qualities, we develop the qualities of Krishna. That's the effect. Just like, just like these computers, they're connected to the electricity. You need the electricity. This afternoon, today I was giving class, but all of a sudden everything just stopped. What happened? The Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi went off. And when the Wi-Fi went off, then I had no connection anymore to Zoom. And I couldn't, I couldn't speak, I couldn't do anything, so no power. So yoga is like that. When we're connected to Krishna, then it has a very nice effect, a good effect. In, in, the, in the scriptures it says, Krishna is like the sun and the maya is like the darkness, right? Krishna hao shang tayang yang. Maya shahe an da divang. If there's Krishna, there's, if there's sunlight, there can be no darkness. Rugo yang wang meo he an da divang. If there's sunlight, there's no darkness. And if there's Krishna, there's no Maya. So when we stay connected to Krishna, then we can stay out. Uh, away from the maya. The maya, maya is the illusion. Maya is we're thinking something to be real which is not real. That's what maya is. Just like sometimes we think the body is real, but the body is not real. The body is only the dress, it's only the like the vehicle for the soul. The body cannot run without the soul. The soul is real. The soul has life. The body, actually the body doesn't have life, but it's, it appears to have life because of the soul, when the soul is in the body. So, we are cultivating our Krishna Consciousness. Cultivating Krishna Consciousness. It's a process. Now, some, some of you, like I'm, me, I'm, a, I'm living in the temple. So, you could say it's different for me. You're, you're not living in the temple. You live in your homes and you have your families, and maybe some of you have jobs also, some of you do some job or like that. Koshika has his shop, and Weiwei has to go and teach yoga, and Mary also teaches English, and every, you know, people, and Mr. Lim, he's doing his business, whatever he has to do. You know, everybody keeping busy, doing different things. And somebody like me, I just, you know, I'm just in the temples all day. Well, of course, with the lockdown, I just stay in the t around here. I don't go anywhere. Of course, you, usually I would, but this, this year I've been here in Mayapur all the time. Now, didn't hardly go anywhere at all because not very safe. Even it's difficult to go to temple because there's many people in the temple. And so that some people come to the temple and you don't know if they have the COVID or not, because some people are walking around 
and they have the COVID. You don't know who has it. So everybody wearing a mask and everybody trying to keep a distance away. But many people coming to temple in Mayapur every morning. I went there, I did go for one festival. We had the, I went Govardhan Puja. They asked me to come and give the class. So I went and gave the class. And then just, I went just last week, we had the Rasa Purnima. Rasa Purnima is the, the day when there's a full moon. And in that night of the full moon, Krishna dances Rasa Lila. So, so we, we had a special festival. It's a big fest. It's the last day of Kartik. And it's the last day of the four months of austerity. Woman Sigayuda Kusing, Zweho Itian, Natian Wan Shank, Shub Rasa Purnima. Full moon. So we had a big program in the temple and they asked me come and give the class. So I went there, I saw many people there. So, a little dangerous, you know, for young people, not very dangerous, but for old people like me, <laughs> it's a little bit dangerous. So, Jaipataka Swami, he asked, he told us, he said, he said, all the senior devotees, he said, you have to be very careful. You know, Jaipataka Maharaj, he never comes, he just gives a class on Zuma every day. But he told all the, he said I, he wants all the senior devotees to be very careful, don't get too close to all the people because still a lot of COVID going around, many new cases. I was talking to a devotee in Dubai, he told me in Dubai every day, 1,200 cases. And in Mumbai, Mumbai, India, every day, 30,000. San Juan, San Juan ran your COVID, Maitian. Oh, so, let you know, it's very, see, in Delhi, in New Delhi, many people dying also. So, it's very serious. We have to be careful. So, at the same time, we have to keep busy in Krishna consciousness. Right? Mahatmanas, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mahatmanas to Mamparta Daivim Prakritim Ashrita. The Mahatmas. You know the meaning Mahatma Sindhi? Sindhi Maharaji? Mahatma means saintly person? Yes, yes. Mahatma is a saintly person. Mahatma, Maha means Maha, like Maha Mantra. Means what? Maha. Maha means great. Right? And Maha Atma, great souls. So Mahatmas are great souls. So just like you said, saintly person, yeah? Great souls. So who are all Mahatmas? Devotees. You are a Mahatma. Because you, <coughs> you are a devotee. You chant Hare Krishna. So we, we, are, we don't think, of course we don't think we're saintly persons, but actually, according to the scriptures, if you chant Hare Krishna, you're a Mahatma, you're a great soul, you're a saintly person. And Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Mahatmanas to Mamparta Daivim Prakriti Mashrita. The Mahatmas, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine energy. Daivi Prakriti. Devi means spiritual nature. They're protected. Krishna protects the devotees. Yes. 
Krishna protects the devotees. So then, of course, people will say, well, how is it some people die when they get the COVID? We have to understand when devotee suffers, it's not karma. Devotees don't suffer karma because devotees have surrendered to Krishna. So they don't have karma. Krishna takes away all the karma. But still, Krishna has planned, Krishna has a plan for different devotees. So sometimes he will take a devotee away from one place to another place. Actually, nobody dies. Devotee, we don't die. What happens? We, we change the body. We just change the body. The soul never dies. The soul is eternal. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, for the soul there's no birth and there's no death. So what happens? Death is simply the change of the body. We give up one dress, we put on the new dress. Not a problem. For a devotee it's not a problem. Because devotees serving Krishna here and they'll go on and serve Krishna in some other place. So, no problem. No problem to lament. Just like if you get a new car, are you going to feel bad? Oh, my old car, I like the old car. But you've got a new car. Why? You feel okay, right? You have a new car or you have a new house. You get a new house and you give up the old house to get the new house. Are you, do you feel bad? No, you feel good. Have a new car, have a new house. So, the body also. We give up the old body, we get a new body. And we get a new body to serve Krishna. So, devotee doesn't suffer. People who are thinking they're the body, they suffer. We're thinking I'm the body, I'm attached. This, but devotee doesn't suffer because devotee knows. No problem. Serve Krishna here, go to another place, serve Krishna also. The same. A devotee sees everywhere the same. It does not matter heaven, hell, or liberation. <laughs> heaven. Oh, I wash on ten tang, jing to ten tang. Ten tang kai shang shou. Right? We give blessings to people. Vaman Jufu Ni Shopi Nanshan. Right? You want to live a long life. You can live a long life. Go to heaven. Shang Tian, Jin Chu Tian Tang, you can live a long time in heaven. In Tian in Tian Tang, you can live millions of years. You go there and can a lot of enjoyment, a lot of pleasure, a lot of opulence, you know, Singapore, nothing. Singapore, very low class compared to heaven. You know, if we go to heaven and see how the demigods live in heaven, how they live there, very nice, very opulent, make Singapore look very low class. <laughs> compared to heaven. But you go to heaven, even there, sometimes there's problems. Sometimes the demigods also get problems. Sometimes Indra, Indra, you know, he's the king of heaven. So he's the king of heaven. Sometimes he, he gets 
You know, he, he does wrong things sometimes. Sometimes even he, he's, he's very attached also, he's very attached to being the king of heaven. He doesn't want to give up his position. Actually, it's a position. Just like somebody is the president, it's a position. They cannot hold it forever. They have to give it up. They will die one day. So Indra is the king of heaven. He wants to hold that position forever. This is, I'm Indra, I'm the king, I'm in charge. He wants to, but, but he, and when somebody else comes, some, sometimes the demons come and they will give trouble. Sometimes Indra will have to fight them, have to fight the demons and kill them. Sometimes he will kill even the brahmanas. Because sometimes the brahmanas are also in the, from the demons. So even in the de heaven you get problems and politics and <laughs> different things come up. Just like devotees, sometimes we get trouble, we get politics, arguing. Oh, this is no good, I don't think we should do that. Oh no, I don't like that. <laughs> we have always, we can disagree. Yeah. It's the nature, material world. But in the spiritual world, in the spiritual world there is perfect harmony. Everyone gets along with each other. In the spiritual world there is no problem. I was reading Krishna book. You know, every Wednesday we give the class to the Thai devotees, they translate to Thai. So I'm telling the stories from the Krishna book. So there's a story there how Brahma has stolen away the cows and the cowherd boys and Krishna was left all alone. So Krishna took the place, Krishna expanded himself. He used his mystic power to expand himself, to take the place of all the calves and all the cowherd boys who Brahma had taken away. And after a moment of Brahma's time, Brahma went away for one moment of his time, but one moment of Brahma's time was one year on this planet because the time is different. You see, Brahma lives in the, the top planet in the universe. Also, the top planet in the universe, time is different from this planet. And one moment of his time is one year on this planet. So he went away, Brahma was away for one moment only and he came back and it was one year here. And for one year Krishna had taken the place of all the cows and all the cowherd boys and nobody knew. <laughs> nobody knew because Krishna is so clever. He could, he could take the place of everyone, the cows and the cowherd boys. It was all Krishna. But nobody knew. But because it was Krishna, everybody loved the cows and the cowherd boys more than they loved before. Because the person who we the person who we really love is Krishna. We're thinking we love the body, but actually the person. It, who we really love, the person is not the body, the person is the soul. And that soul is a part of Krishna. So then Krishna showed Brahma how actually he was taking the place of all. And Brahma was, wow, he was very confused, he was very surprised. And then Krishna used his power again, he made everything.
just back to Vrindavan. And there's a beautiful description about Vrindavan in Srimad Bhagavatam. It describes how usually, you know, there's fierce animals and there's gentle animals and some animals like a tiger, they're very fierce and very frightening. But in Vrindavan, they're all friends. All the animals and all the birds and all the, and all the living in, they're all friends with each other because it's Vrindavan. So it's not different from the spiritual world. They all get along together with each other in the atmosphere of Vrindavan, the spiritual world. Right? We want to create that kind of atmosphere. Krishna consciousness is meant for that. That we can feel the spiritual atmosphere. Common mood, everybody working together, everybody friends with each other, no bad feelings, perfect harmony. All centered around Krishna, to, to serve Krishna. That is the Vrindavan atmosphere and that is the mood of the spiritual world. So we want to try to experience this spiritual atmosphere by chanting, hearing about Krishna. Krishna is in our heart. When we chant, we can feel, we can feel Krishna awaking, we feel it. So when we do kirtan, they always say, chant from the heart, chant from the heart, and you can feel from the heart, you can feel the awakening. So now, more and more people, are taking their chanting very seriously. Many people told me they never did much chanting, but with the lockdown, now they, they do more chanting. They become much more serious in their chanting. And they appreciate the holy name. And they, now they have more time to hear also. You know, it's, it's not easy to understand Krishna Consciousness. When we're new, it takes a long time before we can understand what people are talking about. I know I didn't understand in the beginning. I don't know about all of you, I don't know how much you understand. But I know when I was a new devotee, I, I would hear, I would hear, and I wouldn't know what they're talking about, but I was very attracted. Somehow, <laughs> I, I just really, I love to listen to them, but after they talk, I, I don't know what they were talking about. I, I, you know, I don't know what happened, where it went. I would hear, but what they were saying, I don't know. I couldn't remember, I couldn't put it together in the beginning. It was like that. So gradually it starts to make sense. Gradually we start to understand. And Prabhupada said the same. He said, you know, he used to go to hear his guru and he said he couldn't understand what he was talking about. He didn't know what he was talking about. But gradually started to make sense. Could understand. So I hope you can understand something what I'm saying to you, to you tonight. All right, are there, are there any questions from anybody? Uh, Maharaj, I want to introduce a new one, Christine Lim from Laika. Oh. Christine, open the camera and the mic. Christine. Hi, hi. 
Then my other one is Thai Hai. Uh, Christine Lin. Achuta's mother. Oh, Achuta's mother, yeah. Mm. I thought she's Krishna from Maharaj. Malacca, isn't it? Malacca. <laughs> Uh, and the uh, and the daughter, you know. Yeah, they're from Malacca. They're from Malacca, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Achuta is a son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She already took shelter, you know. She wants to get initiation also. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare the, Krishna. The husband also chanting. Oh, Krishna. wonderful. Huh? And uh, another one is Chu Chi Kong. He's from KL. Okay. Hitachi engineer. Huh? Aircon engineer. Aircon engineer. Achoo. Hi. Hi. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hi. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hi. And this uh, Fu Wen Xiong is from JB. Okay. Fu Wen Chong. You know, a Chong, you know. A Chong, you know, from Giri. Giri Gopal. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Your Holiness. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Dhanabhat Pranams. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And the other one is how Huawei, I don't know who is the one. Please open, introduce yourself, Huawei. And another one, Janaki. Please open your camera and the mic. Janaki. Janaki. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Janaki. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Another one is J.R.D.D. David Dasi. I think J.R. Radhika. Maybe. Open your, open your mic. <coughs> J.R. Radhika? I don't know. J-R-D-D. Okay. <laughs> Open your camera and your mic. They're all cam camera, camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> so total, Maharaj, about 25. Oh, oh very about 26, nice. About some are left. Yeah, very good. So this is our Friday class. Every Friday, 8 o'clock, Rajananda will tell the pastime. And I also helping, you know, to give class. So if Maharaj can every month give one class, then it will be nine. Yes, definitely. Then you can see all your, you know, Malaysian, Singaporean, KB, Black, uh, all over the year. Yeah, very good. The last one is, the last one is Apatai, you know, remember? Skudai, Apatai, Hoi Lega Camera, Apatai. Fong Ma Dega Mai, Fong Ma Ra, King Ha Kai. Skudai. Ah, Skudai, yeah, remember? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Chinese man. Yeah, right. Hare Krishna. <laughs> he also Hare Krishna. now, his brother also now slowly following him. Atim. Really? Now, you know? I don't know where he is now. So, our group are mostly new devotee Maharaj. Yeah, I see. So, we take a lot of time to cultivate them. Yeah. 
many years, but also some been around a while. Wei 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 has been around a, a long time, quite a while. Wei Wei and Cindy been around a long time. Also, Mr. Lim, long time, very long uh, time. I think the Maharaj. Okay. Maharaj, yes. Hui Hui and I are in the disciple course. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah, do the disciple course. Yeah, very nice. Who's teaching? Who, who's the teacher? Maharaj, I encourage you to, to start taking, uh, uh, become, uh, be, be, get initiated, Maharaj. Come them are quite long already. Encourage them to take initiation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've done. I did quite a few initiations in China. I did several initiations in Dongbei. Huh? Ah. Hare Krishna. Oh, what happened? I lost you. No sound. Yeah, unmute yourself. I, I, I mute you. Unmute oh, yourself. You, mu you unmute me. Uh, am I muted now? No, no, no. You're okay. Trivikram is muted. Oh, Trivikram is muted. Like... Trivikram, you got mute. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Unmute. Okay, okay. Okay. Very noisy from your side. Yeah, because they are talking here, la. what to do? <laughs> I don't say. <laughs> so, Ma Maharaj, uh -huh. this, uh, you know, the, the new devotees, so because of the pandemic, we meet in the Zoom, so are more close, you know, association. Yeah, because I think so. It's very nice. In, in the, because if you are in the KL, I got to move in Charas, sometimes the temple so i feel the pandemic is good to get us close together so yeah. mara can see so many people at one time yeah very very one nice afa ayo is it ayo afa 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 chai ah hey hoi lega mai afa chai hi hi He also very long devotee of Asai. Afa, yeah. <laughs> His brother is Optim. The song came in, then he went. Okay. Good. Koshika is here already, Maharaj. You can ask him to unmute. Koshika is here. No, oh, Koshika. Yeah, Koshika. Koshika. Hi, your hand. Turn face for Maharaj and the mic. Okay, okay, Hari Okay now? Yeah. He hasn't got a. He's. Hari Krishna, Koshika Prabhu. Yeah, all glories, all glories to you. <laughs> all glories to you. <laughs> I heard they had good program there in Johor. Not really. No? Zoom. Zoom. Only in Zoom. Zoom. No, yeah, no. I, I heard they had program. No, no. They are close. They told me. Yeah. It is close. Kuda is close. Chennai is close also. They had a program. They just told me the last week there they had a program. Oh, the modern program? Yeah. Is it down Yeah. Who was it told me? This uh this uh Ram Tosi. Oh Ram Tosi. Oh. Yeah, I, probably they did in the house. Oh, Some people the, now, I think. Yeah, they did it in the house, yeah. Maybe in the house. Yeah. And then Sri Dham. Sri Dham Ananda, is it? Yeah, yeah, Sri Dham's Sri Dham's place probably. I, I didn't join. 
because once in a while Maharaj, then they gather because of the pandemic, then they have a restriction, you know. Yeah. They are caught a problem, then go to fine, so many problems. Yeah. Yeah. 10,000 ringgit. <laughs> no more than 10 people, right? No, sometimes, uh, you see, after the, uh, I mean, the SOP, you know, social order, yeah. you know, yeah. then they are allowed, you know, certain people, then you have to take the temperature, record everything, so much problem, right? that's why many people are not coming, you know, ah. mm. that's a problem. But anyway, Zoom is good. La. After the pandemic, I think for the gathering is good. La. Yeah, very Zoom, nice. Zoom, you can accommodate so many people. Mm -hmm. you, have we so got any question? Did you get any belief from Sarawak? Yeah, yeah. Kuchin? Sarawak also. Oh, Sarawak. You're talking about what, Maharaj? Well, like Kuchin, you know, the Kuchin, we had a few Chinese people there also. Oh, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Kuchin, I don't know. We should check it out, you should... I don't know Kuchin. We should talk to Kripa, Kripa Sindhu. Yeah. It... Any uh, question, any one year, please ask Maharaj. Mary, you have a question, Maharaj? Yes. I have a question, Maharaj. Okay. Maharaj, I want to ask, uh, uh, in a in a Krishna book, pastime, uh, Krishna is born in a jail, and then be transferred to uh, exchange with Nan, uh, with Yasoda uh, Maya for the uh, with the daughter. Yeah. So how come uh, Baram, Baram has to be transferred in such a way that uh, from uh, the, the the womb of uh, of Devaki to uh, Rohini Maya? How come the the uh, in this case uh, Baram is not being born in the in the jail to transfer that way, like Krishna? Well. The, the point was, you know, Balaram, he comes first to make arrangements in the womb. He has to make it all nice for Krishna to come there. Because after the six demons, after the six, the, you know, the six, those six children were born, they were all killed by Kamsa. So, yeah. so then Balaram comes, he's the seventh child. So he comes to, to clean everything up and to make it all nice and put a bed there for Krishna because he knows Krishna is going to come as the eighth child. So Balaram comes there and makes everything nice and everything. But then, you know, Balaram, it's, the arrangement is that Balaram will transfer to the womb of Rohini because then Balaram can take birth in the home of Nanda Maharaj and then he can be with Krishna. You see, so it was like that, so that Krishna and Balaram can be together. So Balaram mm -hmm. gets transferred into the... Because Rohini is also Vasudev's wife, but Rohini has been sent to Nanda Maharaj's home for her safety. So Balaram was put into the womb. From the womb of Devaki, he went into the womb of Rohini. And he was delivered from the, the womb of Rohini. And then, you know, him and Krishna can grow up together and they can have their past okay. times together. The past time together. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Isha Maharaj. Yes. Uh, just uh, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Just want to refer to this uh, COVID condition now. Uh. Uh, is it a symptom of uh, Kali Yuga in such a way that, you know, this, uh, uh, this uh, symptom could create a uh, religious downfall or does it uplift the religious aspect? Yes, uh, you can see it definitely is having an uplifting effect. 
It, it's up to everyone how we use it. You see, we can use it to downfall, but we can use it to be uplifted also. Everything can be used in different ways. It depends on the individual. We're given that free will. Now for the devotee, the devotee, we're using it to be uplifted. We're doing more chanting and more, having nice association, more association. Before, you know, t we all go to temple, but now we've made temple, everybody's got temple in their home and they do everything at home. And we're having every, we're doing everything at home. But usually we'd go to temple and do everything. But with the COVID, the home has become the temple. So you can see uplifting and uh, you can see also that for the non-devotees, you know, they, they use it, they get very depressed and they, you know, they, they don't know what to do and they, they become confused, they, they cannot have their sense gratification. So it's very depressing for them, but for it's devotee just... it's not a problem. It's nice. So basically now the uh, Krishna conscious, actually uh, once you see that Krishna conscious is, is really uh, very, very uh, viable and important as uh, initially we have it when, when the COVID is not there, we don't see that much of a uh, 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 that, that yes, you can see also like in India, the Yamuna River, the Yamuna River was very polluted, but now, now since the COVID it's become very nice, the water has become so much purified, because a lot of the industry, they're not putting all the waste that they were putting into the, the rivers, so it's become very nice, you know. The river Yamuna cleaned up a lot. So that's a good thing. And you can see also, and the, the environment is getting a better opportunity. You see the environment, this COVID has really helped a lot on the environment. It stopped a lot, you know, the, all the pollution that we were having and all the waste and everything. So it's all reduced a lot. So this is, uh, you know, nature's way of correcting things making the planet a bit more better, improving the hygiene, improving the, uh, the ecosystem, improving the environment, because we were ruining it. We were all ruin, ruining it with all of our cars and airplanes and everything that was going on, burning all the fuel. So, you know, it's made a big difference to the planet. So nature has their way, nature has a way of correcting things when things are going wrong. Nature corrects us and people now, they're more interested, a lot more people are thinking seriously about vegetarianism and they're much more conscious now about health, you know, it's a big issue now, people really think a lot now about their health. Hare Krishna oh, uh, Maharaj, my humble obeisances to you. I have a question for you, sir. Yes. Uh, my question is in Bhagavad Gita 18.73, um, Arjuna said that my illusions are all gone. Um, Maharaj, when did you realize your illusions were all gone? <laughs> what makes you think my illusions have all gone? <laughs> <laughs> I never said my illusions have all gone. <laughs> hmm. Arjuna uh, said... Please share, please share your, your view on this. Sorry? Uh, please share your view on this. Illusions. Well... When uh, Arjuna um, understands that his illusions are all gone. All right. So what, what was Arjuna's illusion? Arjuna's illusion was that uh, well, he, he, did, he didn't want to fight and he, he was in illusion thinking that he was thinking it was good for him, that it was moral for him. 
that he was doing the right thing by avoiding performing his duty, by staying out of the battle. He thought it was being, this was going to be a credit to him, but this was all illusion. And Krishna instructed him that it, it, that it was definitely wrong for him to give up his, his duty, the prescribed duty which he was meant to do. Arjuna was an illusion. He was identifying with the material body, thinking that he was a doer, that he's the body, and he was thinking the people he's fighting, they're the body also. But Krishna explained to him, actually none of us, we're, we're not the body, we're all souls. And Krishna explained that the soul never dies. Arjuna was worried that he's going to kill people, but Krishna explained in the Bhagavad Gita that you don't, the, the, the soul never dies and you can't kill the soul. You can kill the body. And the body is going to die one day anyway, whether Arjuna kills him or not. We're all going to die one day. So this was all different illusions which Arjuna was in. Arjuna was also in illusion a little bit about Krishna. He was thinking Krishna was his friend. But after hearing Krishna speak the Bhagavad Gita, then he could understand Krishna's position. And he understood Krishna as the Supreme, as, the, as Bhagavan, the source of all power and opulence and knowledge. And so Arjuna recognized Ar uh, Krishna's position as, as far above his own. And that's why Arjuna surrendered to Krishna. So that was illusion that Krishna was thinking, Arjuna was thinking Krishna is my friend and we're the same age and we're equals. But after he heard the Bhagavad Gita, then Arjuna could actually understand Krishna's superior position. So that, that illusion was gone. He could see the, the factual position of Lord Krishna as the Supreme Lord, as the source of everything, and Arjuna surrendered to Krishna. So, that's, oh, Maharaj, yes. So that that's the illusion that yeah. we are all trying to let go. Yes, the illusion is that we are thinking I'm the controller, that I'm the doer. You know, we're thinking like that. We're thinking ourselves to be independent of Krishna. But actually, we're not. We're not independent. Thank you, Ma Thank you, Maharaj. Our independence is to choose between Krishna and Maya. Maya means the illusion, right? Illusion means we're accepting something to be real when it's not real. Wouldn't that be yoga maya, sir? Yoga don't, maya. Don't, don't we want to go for yoga maya? Th no, th there's two kinds of maya. There's yoga maya and maha maya, right? Yeah. So, maha maya is taking something to be real when it's not real. And m yoga maya is sometimes it it appears real and sometimes, it, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it appears, sometimes it's not. Just like Krishna. Krishna uses the yoga maya sometimes to reveal himself and sometimes to cover him up. And sometimes Krishna will reveal himself as the child of Mother Yashoda and sometimes he will reveal himself as God. Just like when Mother Yashoda looked in Krishna's mouth, when Krishna looked in the mouth of, when Mother Yashoda looked in the mouth of Krishna, you know, because she heard that Krishna had been eating dirt, so she said to Krishna, open your mouth and let me see if there's dirt in And when Krishna opened his mouth, then Mother Yashoda saw all the universe and everything that's in the universe. She saw it all within the mouth of Krishna. <laughs> so that, that was Krishna revealing Something. This is Yoga Maya. You see, Krishna was revealing something. But, you know, he just revealed it for a little while and then he covered it up again. And then he you know, brought it back to, to the Leela again, that Mother Yashoda was looking into the mouth and seeing 
some dirt is there in the mouth of Krishna. <laughs> so sometimes it's present, sometimes it's not. So Krishna would do these kind of things. Sometimes he would reveal himself as God and sometimes he wouldn't. This is Yoga Maya. Thank you. Now Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, you'll find there's a verse, Krishna says, I, I am never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. For them I am covered by my eternal potency, Yoga Maya. But that, that Yoga Maya which covers up Krishna, that is actually Maha Maya. Because Maha Maya is a, it's like a, it's a, it's a section, it's, some, it's coming from the Yoga Maya. Just like we give the example about electricity. Electricity can be used to heat and it can also be used to cool. It can be used to do different things. So in the same way Krishna's energy, Yoga Maya, can be used in different ways. It can be used to cover up Krishna and it can be used to cover up the material world, the material energy. It, it can be my Yoga Maya can also become Maha Maya because it's a part of Yoga Maya. It's, Much like Zoom, sir. Huh? <laughs> Much like Zoom. Much like the Zoom meeting. Now you see us, now you don't. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like Zoom. <laughs> so Krishna has these potencies. He has inconceivable potencies. You have to understand this. This is a very important point. That there, are, there is such a thing as inconceivable potencies. We are so used to think, we are so used to thinking that we should be able to conceive of everything. We should know exactly what it is and how powerful it is. But Krishna's potencies are beyond all that. Maharaj, I got one more question to ask you. Um, Hari Hari Das Thakur um, did. 333,000 chanting of Maha, um, Maha Mantra a day, which is 192 uh, japas. Do you think anybody um, in Kali Yoga will be able to do that? I think it's very unlikely. Me too. Thank you again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for your question. answer Maharaj for the 192 rounds? Yeah, I said I think it's very unlikely somebody could do that, you know. I think it's really, really, really difficult to get people. Thank you. If somebody tells me they chanted 192 rounds, I'm really... <laughs> I'm, I'm suspicious. Okay. Another question coming, Maharaj, for Mr. Chiang. Yes. Maharaj, uh, okay, again, just now you were referring the mother Yasoda was looking at the, uh, some kind of a uni uh, universal, universal uh, manifestation. And, uh, and uh, I, I think I, uh, uh, there is a manifestation for Arjuna. So uh, what is the what is the manifest, uh, ma uh, such manifestation of universal form uh, link about? Is there any difference or any, any uh, what do you call pastime, pastime teaching about this? The difference of the universal form by Arjuna and uh, Mother Yasoda. Oh, well. Arjuna seeing the universal form, Krishna was showing actually what, what the form which Krishna showed to Arjuna was, it was called Kala Rup or the form of time. And, and Arjuna was able to see how all the people, all the, you know, Bhishma and Drona 
and all of the sons of Dhritarashtra, how they were all being killed. They were all entering into the mouths. They're entering into the mouths of the universal form, showing that they were all being destroyed. So Krishna showed that universal form to Arjuna to convince Arjuna to show him that these people are all going to die. Whether Arjuna fights or not, they're all going to die. So Krishna showed that to Arjuna just to encourage him, you know, that he should, he should take part, he should go ahead and take part in the battle that actually these people are going to die, whether Arjuna fights or not. So this was... And the one, somebody, Prabhupada also explains why Krishna showed that universal form, that uh, he wants to show people that if somebody is also claiming to be God, they should also show the universal form. Mm. You know, if somebody says, I'm God also, then say, okay, then show me the universal form, just like Krishna showed to Arjuna. Hmm? So... Yes, Arasha, there is one, but although the... the, the uh, but it mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, I think some part it was saying that Arjuna also did see something, he says uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, it's something like uh, he become joyful again, hearing, uh, the world become joyful upon hearing the name. So, is, uh, did he see anything that joyful in that manifestation? Did he see anything joyful in the manifestation? Well, no, we don't. And he didn't find anything joyful, rather it, it was quite frightening for him to see that manifestation. It wasn't a pleasant, it wasn't pleasant, it wasn't something he liked. And that's why he asked Krishna to show him another form. He said, I want to see your other form. He said, I don't like this form. But he did, it does mention that the world becomes joyful upon hearing the holy name. And so the name of the Lord is very powerful that everyone becomes joyful hearing the holy name. Thank you, Maharaj. But that form, that see that universal form, that's a material form. It's not an eternal spiritual form. It's a material manifestation. The different elements of the material world all put together. But it's a godless display of opulence. But it's, it's shown because, you know, Krishna wants to establish his position. He had already established himself philosophically. Philosophically, he'd already shown himself to, to be God. When, and, and Arjuna had accepted it also. Because Arjuna had said, you're the Supreme Brahman, you're the Supreme Abode, I accept it. But then Krishna wanted to prove it also, not just philosophically, but practically. And so he showed that form. You know, Krishna just speaking, he said, like in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me, just as pearls are strung on a thread. And so, this was Krishna speaking as the Supreme Lord. So he, he'd established himself theoretically, but he, he has to, Arjuna wants him to do it also practically. So therefore Krishna showed the universal form. And that's a practical demonstration of his position as God. Maharaj, it is very uh, joyful to hear from you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. 
Maharaj, uh, regarding the Mahamaya and the uh, Yoga Maya, can it be said that Mahamaya uh, is influencing us because we put ourselves in the center, and Yoga Maya is uh, if we put Krishna in the center? Yeah. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Yeah, Mahamaya is putting ourselves in the center. We want to be the center, but Yoga Maya, mm -hmm. Krishna is in the center. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Maharaj. Generally, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes. I've got a question. Uh huh. Um, in in the sixties, in the sixties, we talk about the hippies, right? And in the uh, two thousand, we talk about the millennium. So the youngsters of the 60s and the millennium, the, the, um, the millennium, they're more into expected mentality of what is there in for me, whereas I'm not too sure on the 60s, where is experimental and openness to, re to re receive new ideas. So it's a different challenges. So for, for the millennium, um, how do you think our, the approach of uh, Krishna consciousness will be moving uh, towards? Mm. For the millenniums. <laughs> well, the millenniums, they're looking for new ideas. We say there, there are a lot of new ideas in Krishna consciousness. You, you, there's so many new ideas there, actually. The, the new ideas are actually the coming from the, the ancient past. They have the best ideas. The, thing, the things which have all been forgotten about over centuries are the things which are actually the new ideas which we need to introduce. We uh, suffice again. Yeah, there's, it's not that we need something new. But we, we need to look in the past and learn from the past and then use that, use it, the things from way back in the past, put them into practice in the modern times. That's the new ideas, to make use of the ancient civilizations because they had perfect knowledge. They had everything much better than we have it. They had the best social system, everyone was cared for, everyone was provided for, there was no scarcity. There was even, you know, if, 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 a, if, a mother, if a mother was to give birth and there would be a miscarriage, they could go to the king and complain. It was the fault of the king. So things like this, you see, everyone was protected. Even the dog, if the dog was ill-treated, the dog, the, he could go to the king and complain and the king would punish the person who had ill-treated the dog. So there's so many wonderful things in the past, in the ancient civilizations, the ancient systems. Mother, there, is, there is also a lot of... Uh deceptive uh, knowledge on the rise also. It could be a lot of uh, demonic uh, uh, standing on that kind of knowledge. There is a lot because once people are serving over this kind of uh, looking for knowledge, they will come across a lot of, lot of uh, this kind of deception also. Yes, a lot of deceptions, a lot of cheating, it's all going on in the name of progress. Everybody's trying to put their own ideas, imperfect, they have imperfect knowledge, imperfect senses, and they try to cheat everybody. Now we have to hear from the perfect source. You get perfect knowledge from the perfect person. Who is the perfect person? Perf yeah, the perfect person is Krishna, the one who, he knows everything. We want to know about this world, we have to hear from Krishna. He tells us how we should live in this world. We have to take care of the cows and we have to take care of the land, use the land to grow grains. We need to grow food for the people, nice food for the people. We don't need, we don't need all of these things, all these 
things which we're doing with the land today. You know, what are we doing, you know? We're taking the, trying to take the petrol out from the earth all the time. We're, they're doing so many things to the land. You know, in America they've ruined all the land, trying to take the oil out from the land. So we need Amaraj, to... Uh, not, not, every, not everyone in the world can be able to come to this uh, knowledge, uh, Krishna knowledge. So, uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, is it only by His costless mercy, so-called costless mercy, that one can be able to come to Krishna conscious? Well, there's the mercy of the devotee. You know, the mercy of devotee like Prabhupada, who went to the West and who wrote the books in English. You know, he did a lot of work to give this knowledge to others. So, we get, you know, that when we contact the mercy of a devotee like Prabhupada, that's our good fortune and that creates our auspiciousness. Right? Uh, Maharaj, you also mentioned, sorry, Maharaj, you also mentioned that because um, the devotees are intelligent. Uh, intelligent enough to come into Krishna consciousness and the blessings as well. Well, why do we come to Krishna consciousness? In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes four reasons why we would usually okay. come, right? Do you remember that in the Bhagavad Gita? Four reasons. One is, we come in distress. Another reason is, we come in search of some kind of wealth, and we may come out of curiosity, or we may come in search of knowledge. So these four reasons are given in the Bhagavad Gita, and it doesn't matter why we come. But of the, of the four reasons why people come to Krishna consciousness, the best one is the one who's in knowledge. And other people, you know, they may come for different reasons in the beginning, but they have to come to that platform where they're more interested in the knowledge. And that, that, but then they will remain in Krishna consciousness. Now someone may be in distress and they may come to Krishna, but after some time then they forget this distress and then they go back again into material life. Or somebody may be curious and after some time they're not curious anymore, they go away. But if they have the knowledge, if they get the knowledge, then they'll never give up, they'll never go away. Because they'll, they can always get more and more knowledge. So it's important. Maharaj, would you say, sorry sir, would you say that knowledge is the seeking for the truth? Oh yes, right. Seek, seeking the truth, we want to understand the truth, the absolute truth. Right? There's relative truth and absolute truth. Krishna consciousness is actually the study of the absolute truth. The concept of God is not as high as the concept of absolute truth. Because there can be many gods, you know, your God, Hindu God, Muslim God, Christian God, which God, you know. And we, so therefore we speak about the absolute truth. We're not just simply, you know, some Hindu cult or something, you know, we're studying the Absolute Truth. Maharaj, therefore, one needs intelligence to understand the Absolute Truth, isn't it? Because it's a relative of, in, uh, of knowledge and truth. Yeah, but we and get intelligence from Krishna. The intelligence, that's com right. the intelligence comes from Krishna. Krishna says, to those who are constantly devoted to me and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they may come to me. So this, the, you see, the intelligence faculty is situated next to the soul, right? Higher, higher, than, the, higher than the senses is the mind, higher than the mind is intelligence, and the intelligence is seated next to the soul. 
So we get the intelligence from the spiritual, from, from the, the soul, the super soul. Lord Krishna is in the heart of all of us. And he directs us when he sees our sincere desire to want to know the truth. Then he helps us, he shows us where to go, what to do. Then, then where is the false ego then, if, if, um, if intelligence is next, seated next to um, the Atma? Where is the false ego? Well, yes, sir. The false ego is there in the mind. It's, in, it's a mental faculty there. The, we're thinking, false ego is thinking, I'm the doer. I'm the body, this is me, you know. That. The, but the true, true ego, what is true ego is to understand I'm not the body, I'm the soul, I'm the servant of the Supreme. So the, and the false ego is that conception which is there in the mind. So when the body dies, um, is the mind impressions that that baby um, carry on to the next birth if we are not lucky? Yes, that's right. What it's happens at the time of death, the, the soul leaves the body and the subtle body also goes with the soul. The subtle body means the mind. It goes with the soul and it, it takes our impressions to the next life. Right. So we ha that's why we have to think of Krishna at the time of death. When we're leaving the body, we want to be able to think of Krishna at the end of life. Then we can go to be with Krishna. Maharaj, you were talking about the knowledge. Huh? If, we, if we come, we need knowledge. We have to come to the knowledge. Yeah, although uh, this is my experience, but what I'm reading from Bhagavad Gita myself, so I did understand a certain extent. But let's say, uh, let's say, uh, 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 Prabhu Vraja, he was giving a discourse. And sometimes uh, when I hear from him, it's more help, more heartfelt than what I, what I read myself. So, there's a, there's a searching of knowledge. Uh, I think uh, by ourselves is still incomplete. Well, is that so? Our searching for knowledge is not. It's complete. You just have to know where where to take it from. It's all there. We we just have to hear from the right source. Generally, we have, in, in, you know, we have to hear, we have to also inquire. That's the process. Try to understand the truth by approaching the teacher and inquire from him. So this is the process of getting the knowledge that you have to, you, have, you know, you have to inquire about it. It's not that everything is just immediately given to you. But you have to inquire about it and gradually it's revealed more and more. That's described in the Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter, verse number 34, a very famous verse. It says, just try to learn the truth by approaching the teacher. The teacher who has seen the truth, he can reveal the truth to you. And the process of approaching the teacher is by inquiring from him. So questions? Yeah? Thank you, thank you. You can see in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna putting questions to Krishna. Arjuna was confused. So he, he asked Krishna, he said, I am your disciple and a soul surrendered. Please instruct me. And similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Parikshit is putting questions to Sukadeva Goswami. Maharaj Parikshit is going to die and he's asking Sukadeva Goswami, what should I do? How should I prepare for death? So very good that you're all inquiring. Very nice questions. 
It's very nice. This is a proper way to progress in spiritual life. You put questions. So, so any more questions, everybody? Because it's uh, going to be... Another question from Alex. Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> Alex, yeah, yeah. Hey, you unmute yourself, unmute yourself, unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, 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 who are they, the Aryan? Maharaj, I think Maharaj is here. Who are they, the Aryan? Who are the Aryans? Uh, who are they? Oh, the Aryans, they are the... The, you know, there was an Aryan civilization. Aryan means that, that people were very cultured and civilized. And what happens was, you know, they, they, were a they were living originally in India, and some of them moved to the West. They went into Europe and like that. So there was something called the Aryan invasion. And so what happened, they came out of India, they moved into Europe and they brought their, some of the knowledge, some of the wisdom with them into Europe. Oh, they, that means they bring the, 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 uh, the Krishna consciousness to, to, to other parts of the world. Well, they brought not so much Krishna consciousness, but they brought the Vedic culture. The Vedic culture, something of the Vedas, you know, the Vedic culture. Uh, uh, did, did, did they all Indian? Yeah, they came out of India, they came from India, North India, long time ago. Are they, uh, yeah, but they are, are they are Indian? Yes. But India it wasn't called India then. When they, at that time, they weren't called, it wasn't, it, there was no India, you know, there was all of these names, all these places, this is all created by people now. Thank you, Maharaj. Ma Ma Maharaj, I've got a question to ask you. Yeah. Um, do you think Srila Prabhupada would, would um, do you talk to him? Who? Rather than just from his books, Srila Prabhupada. In the moments of silence, do you talk to him? Do I talk to him? Yes. Yes, sometimes I may talk to him, yes. Certainly I pray. And what, what would he say to you? I said. And what would he say to you? What would he say to me? Well, he would, yeah. he would say things like, you know, cooperate, work together, keep the movement together, keep devotees united. He would encourage me and try to expand the Krishna consciousness movement. Think about, you know, opening up new places, go to some new fields sometimes. And do whatever you can to help others. Thank you. Prabhupada like to see the devotees happy and Krishna consciousness. He wanted to see the devotees taken care of. And he wanted to see the deities also nicely taken care of. The temp the deity the temples should look nice and should be well organized, they should have nice programs. You know, all of these things were important to Prabhupada. Uh, there was an article that was written whereby he he was very angry one time when the food that was served the prasad that was served and the dogs wouldn't weren't even eating it so he was very upset with the devotees so i mean that was a very interesting story that the standard that he that he sets I've, ne everybody. I've never heard of this story before where did you get this story from <laughs> uh, let, let me, let me, um, it was told, um, it was some time whereby the food that was being, the prasad that was being served and, you know, the dogs, like in Mayapur, they were hungry and they weren't eating it. 
no, so uh, no, Sri Lanka no, no, got no, really no. upset and started um, no, scolding no, his no. disciples. No, 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 this is not yeah. right. This is really, I don't know where you get these stories from. I, but I, the, uh, what I do know is what happened was that after the devotees took prasadam, you know, they would take their leftovers, they would throw it out, they throw it outside the garbage like that. There was some kind of pile where they had, you know, leftover banana leaf plates and so on, you know. And so Prabhupada saw that there were some children who were coming and they were, you know, looking and they were even trying, maybe taking some of the food. And so at that time Srila Prabhupada said that that nobody should go hungry within 10 kilometers of the temple. So he began a program that all the local people, they could come and have prasadam there, free. And they could come and take the prasadam, and the, you know, devotees cook and they would come and they would have the program, like I think once a week they would come and they would have the program, people could come and they would serve prasadam free to all the because he said nobody should go hungry within 10 kilometers of the temple. And even to today, during the lockdown period, devotees have been going regularly every day. They've been going into different villages and distributing food to the people. But of course, Prabhupada wanted that the prasadam, sh it should be good, I, but I never heard anywhere that the food was so bad that even the dogs wouldn't eat it. This is, I don't know where this story came from. Uh, oh, Maharaj, uh, this one is from the farm project uh, in India, the first farm project that was under uh, uh, Maharaj uh, Hari Sauri at the time. Hari uh, Sauri? Yes, given yeah. this, uh, this, uh, Cause uh, uh, this discourse that time he mentioned this. Really? He said like that? I'll have to ask him about it. I don't know. I never had this before. I will ask him. I, he's here in Mayapur. So I, when I see him next time, I'll question him on this. But cert certainly the food should be good. I know sometimes Prabhupada would say that, you know, the, he would try the cooking and say, oh no, the food, this cooking is not good. He'd say it wasn't good. Who cooked? And he would complain and he'd, have the, he'd train the cooks. He would personally go and train the cooks how to cook. So Prabhupada was very concerned about the quality of the cooking. That it sh the, could, the, food, the, should, the food should be tasty, everything should be well prepared, should be nice, should be satisfying. Actually, Krishna consciousness is sometimes called the kitchen religion because we spend so much time cooking and distributing prasadam is a very big activity. It's something which we do a lot. We distribute food and generally we're known to have very nice food and people like our cooking a lot and people come because they want the prasadam. And that's true, especially you go in countries like Australia, they have a very big name. People everywhere know how the devotees cook very nicely. And I know and also in England also people come to the temple, they want prasadam, they know we have very nice food. So to hear that you know, the dogs didn't like, wouldn't even take it, I don't know, I mean, it's very unusual. Usually dogs in India, they'll eat anything. Any more question? Because it's going to be 10 o'clock. <coughs> I think Maras. Okay, Prabhu. Thank you very much. On behalf of all these devotees, I'd like to express my gratitude and thankful for your class. And also, 
I hope every month we can have one, one, you know. Oh yeah. Plus Maharaj Anytime you just remind me, Prabhu, I'll be happy to come. Anytime on Fridays, I'm yeah, coming. Yeah. Anytime you want me, you can just. So, yeah, thank you so much, Dandawan. Pranam to you. You take a good rest. India should be now uh, 11 or 12 o'clock, I don't know. No, here it's only 7.30. So 7.30. Oh, 7.00. Oh, sorry, sorry, the other way. <laughs> I thought it's... <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. One hand. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada ki jai. Gorbaik Tavrinda ki jai. Ki jai.